podcast. This is episode number four. I'm Jackson and I am your host. Um, I just want to kind of thank everyone who's recently subscribed. That was a really nice and very pleasant surprise. Um, seeing as I'm on episode four, I've been, I think, struggling with the, the outreach. But um, by the way, thank you to all those lovely people that click the subscribe button. So on that note, if you like what you're watching, do please like and subscribe the videos and to my channel. I greatly appreciate it and it makes me really giddy. <laughs> um, but yeah, so first off, I do have some admin that I'd like to talk about. I have created a Ravelry group for the podcast. It is the Knit and Grit podcast. You can search it on Ravelry and find it. That is where I will be putting show notes and any other fun podcasty related things that I can think of will be going there um, just so it's easier to find the patterns and stuff that I talk about in the podcast and you know whatever else I'm talking about. But um, but yeah, so that's some admin that I have. I also have, since fall has started, today is the 1st of October, so we are definitely in foolish fall swing, even though it fall teased us here with a little bit of cold weather, but I decided I didn't want to stick around, and now it's back up to 78, I think. Um, I'm wearing a sweater because my house is cold, not because it's cold outside. But um, because it is fall and I just recently celebrated my 23rd birthday and all that fun stuff, I decided to do a bit of a giveaway. Um, so my giveaway will be happening on my Instagram, which is at the knit and the grit on Insta. So um, if you want to participate, go over there. All the instructions will be there. Um, I haven't quite decided yet during the filming process what you have to do, but that will be decided and placed in an Instagram post. It'll be really obvious. So go check that out if you're interested. Um, there will be some some goodies over there. But, um, but yeah, I decided to do that. I've never done a giveaway, clearly because this is only episode 4 of my podcast, so I've never had a reason to do a giveaway. But I'm really excited. Fall is my favorite season. I get super pumped for it, and so I have some stuff that I want to share that will be going out to someone special. I guess to dive right into what y'all are probably here for, which is the knitting stuff, let's dive into our knits. So my first finished object, well my only finished object, hold on, this is going to be interesting because I'm wearing them, are my, oh gosh, there we go. Not that y'all, this is probably the most awkward way to show these off, but um, so it's my Are There More People in the Black Lake vanilla socks that I made with Barnyard Knits, Mermaid Sparkle Sock. Oh, you can kind of see the sparkle now. I finished these on Sunday after um, spending a wonderful weekend literally doing nothing but watching Harry Potter movies with my boyfriend for my birthday and eating lots and lots of food. But um, I finished these on Sunday after he left and stuff because I just had to finish up the last little bit of the foot and then do the toe which I always seem to finish socks Sunday nights after he leaves to go back home. But, um, but yeah, so I finished them. I've been wearing them. Uh, I haven't blocked slash just washed one of the socks yet because I finished them on Sunday and then I wore them on Monday. And this week has been like really rainy. And so I thought I would, I was like, I have finished socks and I have not worn any of my socks with shoes yet until Monday because I didn't want to 
wear a pair that I had done like a lot of like detailed work with. So um, these were kind of like my tester socks to see how um, barnyard knits like kind of wore in shoes and what have you and they held up pretty well. They are felting a little bit in the heel which is fine. I just don't know if I'll really wear my handmade socks that I make myself in like tennis shoes very often. When it gets cold that'll be like a different story but um, I just might be more inclined to wear you know like my normal athletic socks and stuff or like my really thick woolly socks which I have a pair down here because I was wearing them earlier but I don't know where they are but um but I get to add them to my little my little stack I have a little pile now and I'm so excited um and I even have the boyfriend's socks with me because he I told him they needed to be washed so I was, I was bribing him with really nice smelling sock wash soaps or er, sock soap so that way then they would smell really good because I got some tough woolens campfire some more sock soap and it smells amazing and so I went and washed all of my socks even though most of these have already been washed again just so they could smell like campfire some more I washed his socks too and they look great but he doesn't wear them with um really he doesn't wear them with shoes he just wears them around the house I don't think he will ever probably wear them with shoes you know he can but I've got these are all the socks I have made this summer other than my ones that I have on right now so this is really exciting to have like such a stack um but yeah so that's my only finished object but super exciting because I actually have a pair of like simple socks that I can wear and these fit really well but um, to move on to the grits, the first one I'm going to show is, ooh, gosh, got a little tangled, um, my I Smell Snow Shawl. So I've made a lot of progress on this. This is what I've been knitting on since I finished my socks. So um, this little stitch marker is kind of where I was um, maybe a little bit farther along than I was last time. Um, I was probably like down here last time I showed this. So I've done like a good five inches. Found out again, I was I was thinking I had enough yarn. I don't <laughs> for um, to complete the full uh, pattern. So what I'm gonna do, cause this is already probably longer than what the actual pattern calls for. I need to whip out my um, my measuring tape, but according to my gauge on this, it's already like way wider, like this way, than um, that way, um, than what the pattern calls for. So it's already quite big. It'll fit like wrapping around my neck right now. And I'm gonna do a few more repeats. But um, I'm probably only going to go up to the end of the second eyelet section because I don't think I have enough to do the third eyelet section. So that means I've only got maybe 30 more rows to go before I switch colors just for my own adjustment of the pattern. And then, um, cause this is already going to be six balls of yarn just on this one side, but I'm working with a 50 gram balls from Garth and Or. But I really love this pattern. The I Smell Snow, um, shawl, scarf, whatever you want to call it, is by Melody Hoffman or B Mandarins, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, and she has a great pattern it's really well written it's pretty much row by row and this is like pretty simple um, I do want to make this again at some point with um, fingering weight yarn and actually do like the full pattern because I will be able to do that with fingering weight 
But, um, but yeah, so I'm about to switch to my tawny color. Um, this right now is Stout and Garthenor, which I'm sure y'all are probably sick and tired of hearing. I probably just need to bite the bullet and just like get to the second color so it's obviously more interesting. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so that is my second, not second, my first work in progress. Wow. English hard brain not working. Needs more caffeine. But, um, but yeah, so I'm almost on the second color after I've made my pattern adjustments. <laughs> but, um, I really, really like it. I'm super excited. This has been like a really great, like, library knit for me. Um, I've just been like kind of powering through as I sit in the library. This pattern is super repetitive, which is really nice. I'm excited to get to the decreases because this is over 200 stitches on the needles right now so it'll be nice to get into the decreases and have it get smaller and feel more productive but um but yeah so as of right now I've been walking around with my porter bin to the library but that's fine I love this thing and it fits the entire project in here so that's nice along with hand cream and stuff like that because my hands have been crazy dry but um but yeah so that's that my next work in progress I haven't made a ton of progress on but I need to show it and be on top of my shit pardon pardon my language <laughs> I need it I need to be on top of this one I need to start working on this more because it's starting to get chilly and I want to have a sweater to wear that isn't like crazy thick like my other ones. Not much progress has been made on this. I will probably pick this up tonight though because um, this isn't a hard pattern where I'm at right now but I am really close to um, I've just got a couple more inches until I start doing shoulder shaping or not shoulder shaping armhole shaping and so I want to get there. What's making this feel really slow for me is um, it not being in the round I really wish that it was um, because then like I'd be halfway done with the body versus just halfway done with the back and stuff and I think I think this pattern probably could have been pretty easily adjusted to be done in the round until you got to the armholes but um, but either way I really want this like this is such fall vibes and that's my wonderful little sign over here says fall vibes only because that's what I'm about but um like the colors are just perfect for this time of year and there's a bunch of stuff that I really want to do that are very folly things and I want to be able to wear this for them so I need to work on it some more which I'm gonna do this afternoon I think I'm gonna do Probably one more repeat in my I Smell Snow shawl, and then do a couple of rows in my um, Mistral sweater, which this is the Mistral sweater by Emily Green in um, Dragon Horde Yarns sweater weather colorway. Um, I don't know if she'll have it in the store anytime soon. Um, because I know I follow her on Instagram and like she had been vending at Vogue Knitting Live and then is going to Rhinebeck so I don't know if that will be in the shop anytime soon if anyone's interested in it but love that color really excited um, the other work in progress that I have are my sister's Evia Mittens by um, Skeinder Knits, so this is the second, this is the September pattern for um, her Selby Mitten Club. This is what they look like. They're really beautiful. And I'm really excited to be making these. I finally casted them on and started working on a little bit of the color work for the um, cuff. 
and you can't tell too much because I've only done like a super tiny bit but um, the colors are showing up pretty well I think I need to do a little bit more in the cuff to um, a like see how well the blue ish green and the pink work together in color work since they both are variegated and they both do get fairly light in certain parts um this bottom bit just has like a stripe and then pink and then I just started the first row of color work before putting it down but um I am interested to see I really hope that it does show up well because I do really like the look of this pattern and I do really think my sister would love having mittens these color these colors they're not what she would typically go for but I think she would enjoy them especially in the winter time to have that Plus, my sister's pretty knit worthy. You make her something, she'll wear it. Um, and then my other works in progresses are, well, one of them I can't really show because it's, I finished the first sock for my Hermione's Everyday Socks that I'm calling Hermione's Autumn Socks. I haven't cast on the second one. I have decided that well, my plan was to not cast on anything new and to finish up what I have been working on before starting any new projects. I lied to myself and to you all, I suppose, because I think I said that last time that I wasn't going to cast on anything new and then I got too excited and couldn't help myself. So, one of the patterns that I got way too excited about was, if I can find where the... I just have the pattern and it's not in here. That's sad because I printed out a copy of the what's this look at? Where did I put it? Whoa! This is a predicament. What did I do with it? Oh well. Um so I had done a little stash enhancement in preparation for a pattern to come out. And some of that stash enhancement was this. So I got myself some Brooklyn Tweed Arbor in the Klimt colorway, as well as Brooklyn Tweed Arbor in the Gale colorway. That's my hair. Um, and I had gotten these both with the intent of making one thing, but just two separate colors. So one. The first one that I'm making of this is um, in the clip colorway. So I started and I've cast it on the Gable Cap by um, Tabitha Gandy or um, Tabby from uh, Hey Sister Podcast and Hey Sister Yarn Co. Um, I've been, I follow her and her sister's podcast and stuff and um, I had seen her and Rachel both working on this and I got really excited and I really wanted to cast it on because it's a really pretty hat. And her pattern came out last week, I think. And so um, I bought the pattern and my yarn had already come in. And so this weekend I sat down Sunday and basically spent all afternoon figuring out how to do a tubular cast on. I've never done a tubular cast on, but I did it and it's there. And I'm really proud of myself. Uh, Cause this was something that I've always kind of avoided cause I was like, Eh, I don't want to do it. That looks hard. It's too much time. I tend to do a long tail cast on for everything, so that's usually pretty stretchy. Um, but I decided to do what was suggested in the pattern and do the tubular cast on. I don't want to do tubular cast on for larger projects because I'm lazy, I guess. Um, plus, this was kind of hard to follow initially. Um, I will continue to try it out with smaller projects, but um, as of right now, um, I don't want to be like casting on a sweater's quantity amount of stitches in a tubular cast on because that just this this took me all afternoon to cast on 120 stitches or 28 stitches. Um, so. As of right now, until I get a little bit more efficient, it'll be smaller projects like hats and stuff like that. 
where I do the tubular cast on. But I'm loving this colorway. Um, I don't know how this will look on me necessarily because mustard is kind of a funky color for me. I like it, but I have a hard time figuring out whether or not I like how it looks next to my skin tone. Like, I think it looks okay, but it's just, if it's too green, it can make me look kind of ill. Um, but I do like this clumped color. Um, it also speaks to the fact that I like art history and makes me think of clump paintings. But, um, but yeah, so I'm going to be making it first in the clumped color and then I'll be making it in the gale color for part, not part two, but for the second half because I want to have two. But, um, but yeah, so I casted that on when I was like, no, we aren't going to cast that on. And then I cast it on something else too. This one's really pretty and I'm justifying it by it not being something for me as to why I casted it on. But um, I am making the Haze Scarf by um, Julie Hoover. So this is a fisherman rib scarf with like color blocks. Um, and it's very masculine because if you can guess I'm making it for my boyfriend. Um, I'm doing version A, so this pattern, um, nothing really different, it's just like how often you stripe and where you stripe, which I'm not following terribly closely, um, just because I can kind of play with the striping how I want, but this is what it looks like so far. Um, it's looking way darker than it is in person. But um, along with my Arbor purchases, I also bought some uh, Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, which is what the pattern calls for. And I kind of forgot how much I really love Brooklyn Tweed. And specifically their, um, their shelter yarn. I had made my, um, my Gretter sweater out of shelter. And I happen to have some leftover of this gray color which is um storm cloud yeah storm cloud i had leftover of this gray color like a skein or two which worked out perfectly which is working out perfectly because i believe that's as much as i need i might have oh i have three extra skeins but either way um so i saw this on ravelry and i was like oh that'd be really cool because i was like trying to think of like stuff that i could make the boyfriend for prezzies and stuff like that. He knows I'm making this because he saw me working on it this weekend. But the other colorway is this color. So this is the ember color, which I really like. This is a really great, warm, rich orange. And then um, I'm doing fossil because I also had leftover fossil from my uh, Gretter sweater. So. These are all the colors together. And so I'm trying to get this done by this weekend because I'm almost done with uh, with Brandon's quilt. I will be working on his quilt all day tomorrow. Um, I just have to finish machine sewing on the binding. Um, the only reason why the binding is not sewn on yet is because I broke a needle. And I need to go buy more because it was apparently the only one that I had. But um, I'll be hitting up the Wally World probably tonight and go pick up some needles for my sewing machine. And finish up sewing on the binding first thing tomorrow morning. And then I'll spend the rest of the afternoon hand sewing. And then it'll be done. Finally. I started this back at the beginning of the summer. But um, with that, I kind of also want to give him his scarf. Uh, and if it's not done by this weekend, it's not that big of a deal, but I also want to have his scarf done before we go to Knoxville. Just, again, because it's going to be assumably kind of cold. And it's, I'm, I, I'm doing this in Tennessee colors, like, it needs to be warm in Knoxville. So, 
that is the plan. This is really great. Um, I was kind of scared. I've, I've been learning new cast on methods apparently this past week because um, I'd never done a backwards loop cast on. Which sounds really stupid because that's probably what everyone learns first because it's not as hard but I have only ever learned how to do a long tail cast on and so this was really interesting but um, this is also just a really great simple stitch pattern that um, looks really complicated or sounds kind of complicated without being actually complicated once you get into it um, because it's a uh, it involves like knitting through the bottom which just sounded really weird and I was like how do you do that and I had to like watch a video in order to get it but I'm loving how this is turning out and probably what's going to end up happening is I'm going to be making one for myself in red because red is my favorite color and I want everything in red like everything can be gray and red and like white and I'd be really really happy but um those will actually probably be the colors that I make mine in and just maybe have a little bit more fun with the um, color work or the striping and maybe make the main color red instead of uh, a neutral color but um, I am doing the second main color or I guess color two is going to be the ember color um, and then there's going to be small striping of white in two different places. So I'll probably have a bunch of leftover um, fossil for some other project. But I think, is that all of my whips? That was a fair amount. Um, I do have a lot of stash enhancement since it was my birthday. Ow. Um, I kind of gone a little cray cray with um, buying myself yarn very much like treat yourself get yourself yarn present and then some of it um, my wonderful wonderful parents got me so I might not bother with showing y'all because they're set up on the table but um, I got a ball winder and swift so I can finally wind my own balls into cakes so I don't have to hand wind anymore so that's really great I have those already anchored to the table in my dining room um, to wind all the things when I can but uh, it's saving me so much time and it's making me so happy because I prefer cakes to hand wound balls um, but yeah, so my parents got me that, and they also got me the Coco Knits, uh, oh gosh, what is it, blocking kit from, um, I think they got it off the of Friends Supply Co. off their website. But I have that now, which is really exciting, because I was able to um, block my Carbeth sweater, which once it gets actually like cooler out, I'll probably wear that on the podcast, but it's too hot, and this is way more loose and comfy than my carbo sweater actually is. My carbo sweater fits pretty well. Um, but I was finally able to block that which was really exciting and which will work out really great once I finish the back piece of my um, of my mistral sweater. Uh, so I can actually start blocking those pieces in advance before you know like I finish other pieces so once everything's all done I can you know, uh, seam everything together and not have to just be sitting around waiting for a bunch of pieces to dry. But so my parents got me that and then I got myself um, some yarn and I'll show you now what I got. Um, so this first one kind of has like a little bit of a story behind it. My boyfriend had gotten me Harry Potter themed birthday presents, so he got me like the unofficial Harry Potter cookbook, he got me um, like wand makeup brushes, and uh, he got me tickets to go see an orchestra performance of the music from the first Harry Potter movie. 
And we basically spent my entire birthday watching Harry Potter movies and making food out of the Harry Potter cookbook. And one of the things that we ended up making were pumpkin pasties. And so um, I was like, we're getting this. And so I had been planning on making the pumpkin pasties for since he gave me the book, which he'd given me before my birthday, like a week or so before my birthday. But um, Knox Yarn Co. had this um had this in their shop in her shop and it's pumpkin pasty on her minerva sock base so it's uh 50 percent superwash merino and 50 percent silk i have no idea what i'm gonna make with this but i'm hopefully eventually going to make a shawl out of it i just think i need to either get another skein of this or um like look at those colors um, another skein of this or some kind of neutral color like a cream or like a marshmallowy color to go with this so I could do like a one of those like two color shawls which I think would be really pretty and I prefer to get whatever the other yarn whatever the second skein would be um, in either the Minerva sock base or someone else's yarn but in a similar um, breakdown, like percentage wise, like it being like a 50 50 super wash silk or something like that, just so the feel stays the same because this is super nice and really soft and just feels really great. And this would be really great, you know, like next to your skin and on your neck. So, I want to make something like that with this. I just don't know what pattern it would be or what the second skein would be. So um, this is kind of being put in storage for a little bit. Uh, I'll figure it out and it'll probably be something that happens pretty soon. So another stash enhancement type stuff is I got myself some more Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. And I had had my eye on this Long John's color for a really long time. When I was making my garter sweater, this was what I was going to make the red color in my sweater. The yarn store I was in in New Zealand just didn't have enough of this, so I decided to go with the Cinnabar, which is a much more, um, like, orange, vibrant red. Um, and this is much more dark, and this is, like, my favorite color of red. I really like those kind of, like, deep jewel tones. And then I got this colorway, which is Snowbound. Um, and so I have two skeins of Long John's and two skeins of Snowbound, and I will be making my own pair of Selby mittens out of this. This will be the um, first, since this is like worsted weight, this will be the first in the Selby Mitten Club 2 done by Skeiner Knits. So um, I will be casting these on, but that'll just happen probably closer to Christmas. Uh, just because I have enough on my plate and I want to get the gift knit knitting and, you know, what I currently have on my plate done. Plus these colors feel much more Christmassy and wintry and, you know, I still got time until then. But yeah, so these are in the works. I wound these up because I just thought they just look so pretty in cakes. But, um, but I'm really excited to be making silver mittens for myself out of these. And they're going to look really pretty, and they're going to have great contrast, so I'm really pumped. And then some other ha stash enhancement would be... Um, so I'm holding off on making socks for a little while. But I did get on the uh, Woolberry Fiber Co. Um, update, <laughs> and she had a bunch of stuff in her Berry Cashmere blend. So that's 80% merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. And um, this stuff is like super soft. I have the box of chocolates colorway and the macaroon colorway. And then I got truffle. So this is truffle. Don't focus on my face. But so this is the truffle colorway. And there's like a bunch of like speckles of purple and red and dark brown 
in here and it's just really really nice and I really like this um so what I'm going to be doing is this is going to be the main color for some Waiting for Henry socks by um Tabitha Gandy Tabby from Hey Sister Yarn Co. Um so this will be the main color and then I'm going to do it also with this color which is Woodlands which is just this great kind of evergreen color and there's some speckling in here too that's like really nice and um and probably the macaron colorway but um, I probably won't use that very much of the woodlands color and the macaron colorway to really make a dent in either of these skeins so I'll have like another pair of socks out of these but um I got these. They're really pretty and I'm really excited. But I'm not casting on any new pairs of socks. I am not. I want to, but I'm not. If I cast on another pair of socks, it's gonna be it's gonna be these ones. And that's all I'm allowed. As I tell myself and as I have casted on new things this past weekend. Shame on me. But oh well. Either way. So I got that. And then I also got this. This is a contender for um, the giveaway. I haven't quite decided yet. But um, I got the, so this is Knit Style Yarns, and this is the Slutty Pumpkin Latte colorway. <laughs> I just love the name. I saw this on, uh, I think, Grocery Girls podcast, um, and I mainly just really like the mini. And this is also like a really great um, speckly, creamy brown color with um, pops of orange and I love this but I also feel like this is just a really great kind of fall um, sock set so this this might be what I do for the giveaway along with some folly folly goodies but this is just such a great vibrant mini and I want a bunch of things in this color <laughs> But either way, so that's what I got like stash enhancement wise. And I think that's kind of it. So I have like a lot <laughs> on my plate in terms of knitting and I want to make as much progress as I can. But we'll just have to let's see how quickly I can power through some of this. Um, I've made good progress though like on this given the fact that I literally like casted this on Friday I think. And I've just been picking this up sparingly. This knits up really fast. So that's why I'm hoping I'll have this done by this weekend. But, um, but yeah. Current plans for, um, I've casted on my dream knitting, clearly, because I couldn't contain myself. But, um, my current crafting plans are just to get my, um, get my quilt project done. Because that's just been kind of sitting around. And as of right now, machine sewing on the binding has been a pain in the butt. <laughs> and stuff. But once I get it done, it's done. And the hand sewing part, like, it'll take time to, like, hand sew the other side of the bi binding onto the quilt. But um, I can sit down on the couch and just watch Longmire nonstop until it's done. So... That's my plan for tomorrow. Um, once this is done, I'm probably just going to focus all my attention on my sweater because I really haven't done as much progress as I want on that. And I really want to wear that. So it's kind of surprising that I haven't done as much work on it as I want given how badly I do want to wear that sweater because it's going to be really, really great for... Um, for like later on this month and into November. Yeah. I think that's kind of it for me. Uh, school's kind of happening. I'm about to, I think next week starts my GRE prep course, which I'm not looking forward to, especially since my class got canceled initially. And I found out last week that it was canceled because I was the only person to sign up for it because I was the only person who apparently wants to have in 
in-person sessions versus online. So I'm now put into an online course, which I, I am not. The fact that I put up a podcast is surprising because I am not very tech savvy. But I also don't do crazy editing. So there's that too. But um but yeah, so like school's gonna be kind of picking up soon. Latin's getting not crazy intense, it's just like we're moving into more difficult things that aren't necessarily what I've had a lot of exposure to. Kind of We've moved past what I'm used to for uh, foreign language, especially romance languages. So, like, I've never come across declensions, and we're on the third declension, which is the most weird and difficult to remember declension in terms of um, declining your nouns. So, I'll be living in the library a lot, so maybe that'll mean I'll get a lot of knitting done because I'll just be sitting there studying and taking knitting breaks.